Hi, my name is Sean Olson. This video is demonstrating some of the new features in Wallworm that deal with entities. You can now create and edit entities natively inside of Wallworm. Now, there are all kinds of entities that you can place in your scene, and they all add flavor and depth and interaction capabilities inside your map. Now, in order to be able to use any entities, you have to have set up Wallworm correctly to use them. You can do that in the Wallworm settings. And you have to choose an FGD file that's used for your specific mod. If you do that, then you'll be able to use them. If you don't set those up, then you can't. I'm not going to go into that, but there's documentation on the site on finding that. Once you do, inside of Wallworm, under the level design menu, you'll find three new options. Or three options that you can use. The Entity Outputs, which may eventually be renamed the Entity Manager the point entities, and the brush entities. These three menus, these three buttons are how you can get to the entities. I'm going to first show you the point entities menu. When you bring up this menu, you'll get a list of all the point entities in your mod. And you'll find when you work with different mods that this list actually changes depending on the mod. There's some entities in one game that are not in the next. To plop down an entity, I first find the entity that I want to use. In this case, I want to use Info Target. And then I'll need to click this option here that says Place Entities. When I click that, I can start dropping them in the scene. Before I do that, I want to point out this checkbox here. This checkbox will have an impact on how the entity is placed. If I choose this option here that says Picked Point Origin and Place the Entity, and turn Snaps on, you'll see a little snap icon appear here. And wherever that point is, that point is the origin of the new entity. So in this case, the origin was at the um, snapped vertex. I don't always want that, so I actually have two options here. I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to turn on Snap to Face. That way I can snap um, to this face object and drop it here. And I'm going to place an entity on this face. And when I snap to this face, and I do not have Picked Point Origin on, it actually goes up eight units above the Picked Point. If I turn that back on and click, you'll notice that it's in the ground. If I turn it off, it'll be on top of it. So that's what this button here does. Once you've created entities, and place them in the scene. You can always select them and get all their properties. All the ones you would find in Hammer that deal with the, uh, the entity. Uh, you can give it a, a name. And this is how other entities reference it for inputs and outputs. Give it a name. Um, you can other pick other nodes. Um, if the entity has an option to pick other nodes, you'll see this Pick Parent Node button. And it also has an Outputs list, which we can add outputs to edit the interaction. So I've selected another entity in here. And you can see in its output list, it has a bunch of outputs uh, that are interacting with other objects in the scene. If I select one of these from the list, the actual uh, data for this is going to be pre-filled. Uh, it shows the, uh, the output name. You'll get a list of outputs that you can change and modify things to. The target name on this one. And you do have a pick target button that allows you to pick targets specifically in the scene. Now that function only actually works with objects that have a target name designated in the target entity node. Uh, you have a list of inputs that are based off of the current target. I want to point out that this list here, whenever you select an object in the scene or in this list, the outputs list, any entity that is affected by that output will flash in the scene briefly. So this a tone map controller's name is Tone Controller. And when I select this output, you'll notice that this will flash briefly. You'll see that there. It's kind of lagging with my control with my video here. But it, this other one also affects it. So when I select it, you'll notice it's going to flash. 
See, there it flashes. Hopefully that uh, records. If I right click this, it's going to actually select and move me to that object. So if I right click, it's going to move the, the current selection to the object or objects that are affected by that output. Now this object has no outputs. However, if I scroll down, I will see that it says current input entities. And it lists the entities that currently have outputs that are affecting this entity. Whenever I select any of these objects in the list, and notice it will flash. If I select it, it flashes. And it, whichever one is highlighted, there's only one in this list. If I hit go to input, it will select that one and move the focus to that object. I may eventually actually make it so that right clicking it uh, does it for that just like it does up in the inputs. But if I hit this go to input, now I'm back at this input right here. So that's a way for you to go back and forth between the, uh, the things. There's another tool in Wallworm for working with entities under level design. And it's currently called Entity Outputs. And I believe we'll rename it to Entity Manager eventually. And when you do this, it will create uh, two lists here. The top list is all the entities in your scene that have output capability and it's broken up into two groups one group is those that currently do have outputs and those that are available and can have outputs the list below here is a list of all the inputs in the scene that currently that let you have inputs now there's this button over here if I click this it might be slow um, it takes a minute it will refresh it and it's slower than these other ones, so I've made it an option that is not on by default. But when you do click it and it does calculate, it will also break up the bottom the same way the top is, which is to show you those that currently do have inputs being worked on. And it took my computer about a minute to refresh that with that button. There may be some optimization that I can do to fix that in the future, but for right now, uh, this is a, an optional thing to press. But you can see now it's broken up into two groups, nodes with inputs and all available nodes. And basically it's showing here all these entities that are in my scene that currently are affected by the outputs of other objects and affecting their inputs. Now any of these, if I select them, if I click on them one time, that object in the scene flashes. So this object is Logic Auto 1, it will flash. And these are compare objects. If I select it, it flashed in the scene to let me know what it was. If I double click it, notice I have logic auto selected right now. If I double click this logic compare, it changes the focus inside Max to that object and we have it listed over here. And the same thing works for uh, the inputs. If I select one, it will flash in the scene, and if I double-click it, I will go to that object. And you can then edit the things in Max. Eventually, I'll uh, try to enhance this, giving sorting and, and various other ways to, to view it and work on it, but it's still early in development. Now I'm going to show you a couple other features with the, the point entities before we move on to brush entities. And this first one involves using... Uh, Wallworm model tools, uh, entities that are in a scene. In this scene here, many of my Wallworm model tool helpers are on the outside of the map. So I have the helper objects for a model out here. So this helper equates to this column. If I want to specifically set properties of this, for example, it's a prop static as it exports by default. If I want to make this a prop static with specific settings or something other than a prop static, what I can do is open up the point entities. And again, this is on the helper that you do this for a wall or model. And then I would go down to the entity that I want it to be. And in this case, I would choose prop static. And then I would do selection as point entity. 
It's kind of like the tie to entity for brush entities in Hammer. When I do that, now this Wallworm model tool helper itself, when I select it, not only can I open it with the Wallworm model tools, but I can also see over here various settings for it that you would have for this entity that are not normally part of the things that you can do in Wallworm. However, there are a couple things. One, when you assign a point entity to a Wallworm model tool helper, it will never use the world model, this here, and there are other things that it, it will possibly never use. In fact, almost all entities inside of Wallworm will have this pitch yawn roll. Those are all actually ignored. Whatever you type in here will be completely ignored because those numbers are always based off of the actual orientation of your objects in your scene. So that's a couple of things to keep in mind. If I didn't want this to be a prop static, say I wanted it to be a prop dynamic, I could salute, select that and choose selection as point entity. And now this prop would be a prop dynamic instead with all the options that you get with prop dynamic. Now remember, if your model in your scene is a Wallworm model tool model, you apply this point entity to the helper, and that's it. If you want to remove that uh, entity, you just choose detach entity when you have the object selected, and it will go back to normal. That's for Wallworm model tools. If you're using the proxy functions inside of Wallworm, it's similar. In this case, I'm going to select this object here, which is a proxy. Let's select this tree. And it's a group of proxies, actually. But if I want those to all be prop static, specifically, with, that I want to control their details in, then I would select that proxy and then assign it, just like I did to the wall or model tool helper. So for the proxies, you assign it to the actual model. This column is a proxy of that. So if I wanted to assign specific settings for that one, I could go and choose prop static, selection as point entity, and now I can edit this proxy over in the, and change some of its specific settings that are different than these. Now again, just like with the models here, the proxies do not use the world model field at all, ever. It always comes from the Wallworm model tool. However, if I had um, just placed a prop static in the scene that's not tied to a Wallworm model tool model or proxy, I can type in a world model uh, and it will use whatever is used in the game. So now let's move on to brush entities a little bit. Uh, it's very similar. We will find an object in the scene that's a brush. I'm going to choose this large circular column here. It's a brush geometry in my scene. If I wanted this to be a specific brush, I would choose Wallworm. Level design, brush entities. Choose the entity I might want it to be. We're going to just for now choose Funk Brush and choose Tie to Entity. Now I can go and change any of these objects for the properties for this, like I would inside of Hammer, including inputs and outputs. Now this brush here, actually, um, in my design purposes, I do not want to be a funk brush. Um, I'm going to move it to world that's getting rid of the entity. I actually want this as a funk detail. However, with Wallworm, there's a special function with funk detail that you can use instead of using the brush entities. And that is in the anvil under tags. There's a special thing called details. If you add something as a funk detail this way, it will export in game as a funk detail without needing to add an entity to it. In fact, I prefer using this function, especially if you have a bunch of objects together, the group detail, which ties them all into one. The group function for this uh, brush entities list actually is a little bit awkward, and I'm not going to explain that in this video. 
anyway, hopefully you've learned a little bit about what you can do with Wallworm with this. And uh, I look forward to some feedback and people using this. Uh, it's a feature that I've wanted to use for a long time. I've used Convexity for this in the past, but it's been bugged out lately. Hasn't been developed much and did not include inputs and outputs. So that's why I went ahead and added this. I still am a fan of Convexity and it's got great uh, tools that you should consider getting. But hopefully those of you that are interested in getting into Max for level design will find this extremely useful and, uh, and fun for uh, opening up your creative juices. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net, and you can always get the latest version of Wallworm at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.